Want to learn how to integrate databases into your .NET projects? In this video, we'll break down the two main approaches in Entity Framework are Code First and Database First. Whether you prefer starting with code or letting the database design lead the way, we'll cover both methods using the latest .NET version, .NET 9, helping you choose the right approach for your project. Welcome to Code the Future, my name is Alan, and I help you learn C Sharp and .NET on your own. Now let's dive in. So what is Entity Framework Core? Entity Framework Core is a tool set for .NET developers that simplifies database access by allowing us to work with databases using .NET objects. It eliminates the need to write complex SQL queries by providing a way to query and manipulate data using c -sharp code. Entity Framework Core supports various database operations like creating, reading, updating, and deleting data, making it easier to manage database interactions in an object-oriented manner. There are two main approaches to using Entity Framework Core, the code-first approach and the database-first approach. The code-first approach in Entity Framework Core allows us to define the database schema using c -sharp classes and then generate the database from these classes. The database-first approach works the other way around. The code-first approach is ideal when starting a new project without an existing database, as it provides full control over the data model through code. Okay, so we're gonna start with the code-first approach, and we are just inside our MVC web app template here in Visual Studio. The first thing we're gonna need to do is go to the dependencies here, click with the right of the mouse, and select Manage NuGet Packages. We're gonna to need to install the needed NuGet Packages in order to implement Entity Framework Core inside our project. So the first package we need here is Entity Framework Core. The first one you see here, click on Install. Click on I Accept. Next, we need the Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. Click on Install as well. And then the Microsoft.EntityFramework.Core.SQL Server. Since we are connecting a project with a SQL Server database with SQL Server Management Studio, actually. Click on it and install. So all of these packages that we're installing right now have necessary tools and commands needed for us to basically map our, our c -sharp classes and models and generate a database and connect it basically with the SQL Server database. Okay, now that we have all of our three packages installed, uh, let's just check the models that we have in our in in this project so here i have only like a simple item model with an id property and a name property and we will just store this model inside our database what we're going to need other than our model we're going to need a context class which as a practice is stored inside the data folder and i'm just going to explain to you what the context class is needed for but let's just create the data folder firstly Just add a folder called data. And inside the data folder, we're gonna need, we're gonna add a class. I limit my app context or something with context in it. Click on add. Now here we have our context class. We are gonna need that our class inherits from the entity framework course DB context class. And let me see what we need to inherit here. We need to actually to inherit entity framework core on top of the page I would suggest. using entity framework core on top of the page. And this class basically contains many properties and methods in order for the context to 
do its work. So the context is this class, like the main bridge that connects the art project with the database. Here we store every instance of the models we have in our project. And with the context, with the method that the context provides, it's possible to basically query data from the database, filter them, get the data or modify them. What we're going to need after inheriting the DB context class is we need a constructor inside our context class. And this will just contain a few generic parameters to enable the needed configurations for our context. So these are the parameters that the that our constructor needs to have. And what we also need to write here is a set you we need inside the context, we store an instance for each model that we have in our project. In this case, we have this item model and we need a DB set instance, which is this entity framework class. And this will be for our item model. We we'll give it a name like items and we give it this getter and setter so this is written just like a property and enables us to access this model from the database and basically what we have in our project to start in the database we need to import the models folder on top of the page my app.models and this is it for the context the next step we need to take is to create a database instance in our SQL Server Management Studio that we are going to use as the database for our project. Just as a reminder, if you want to get the fundamentals right while learning C Sharp, you should check out my ebook, which is on sale now. It will help you with whatever you're building in .NET and save you hours of research by providing all the C Sharp insights you need in one place. This book will be a valuable resource for everything C Sharp related, and you can find the link in the description if you want to check it out. Now back to the video. We can just go to the view menu here and click on server explorer here we have all of the basically a lot of database instances i had created before we just need to go here to data connections click with the right of the mouse and click on create new sql server database here we need to write the server name and basically if you open up the the microsoft sql server management studio you will see the server name on top of the page we can just cl click the name of it here, connect the SQL Server Management Studio to this to our server, and go back to the project. And put the name here. We'll set. We'll use the Windows authentication to log on to the server. The encryption will set to false. You click on trust certificate here we're just selecting here the authentication this is a default one and we're selecting that we do not need to use a password to connect to our database basically here just some options just some configurations don't think too much about it and give the database a name like my app database click on ok and in the after the database will be generated, we should see in this window right here, the name of the connection string. The connection string is the address of the physical database. So basically this tells us where the database is located. We should copy this and the connection string, we need to input it in our app settings.json file so that we then can connect our project to this physical database. Here we need to write connection strings and we need to give a name to the connection string. I usually name it like default connection string, it doesn't matter. Here we input what we took from the 
we input the name of the connection string just right here with the name of the server the name of the database as we can see here and we put the encryption to false and every and some other configurations the last step now to connect our project to the database would just be to go to program.cs and add the service in the services containers basically this will connect our database with our project and with our context so i'll just add the service here builder dot services dot add context the name of our context was my app context here inside we'll just input a few options options let me put this in a new line options does use sql server and inside here we need to access that connection string to get the location of our database builder dot configuration dot get connection string and we need to input here the name of our connection string connection string just close the parenthesis here so basically we are adding a con a service to connect our context basically with our database here just let me remove this dot here need to import entity framework right on top we need to be add the migrations to our database a migration is basically just a class that will be created that is the code the representation of how our database will look like with all of our configurations for our models and the context that we have already written here so to do that we're just going to need to go to tools package manager console here and just write a command add minus migration and just give a name to the migration migration hit on enter so build succeeded and we should see this migration class here on the screen a migrations folder will be basically created the migrations track every change we do to the database schema and each time we change the models or the context we need to add a new migration to the database you can see here that the table will be created on a database with a columns an id column with its specifications and a name column here the primary key is by default the id property as we can see here and the last thing we need to do is to basically update write the comment here update database and this migration will be added to our database right now the table a table for our items should be generated already in our database if you go to SQL Server Management Studio, to the databases, let me find the right database of our project, which were my app database. You can click on tables. We have a table for the migrations here, Entity Framework Core Migrations History, which basically tracks all the changes to the database schema that we make. And right below, we see the items table if we click on edit top 200 rows we should see basically an empty table for the table with an id and a name you can click on design here to see our columns so this is how entity framework course code first approach works 
The database first approach in Entity Framework Core involves generating C# -sharp classes and a DB context from an existing database schema. This method is suitable when working with a legacy database or when the database design is managed outside of the application development process, allowing us to integrate the existing database into the application seamlessly. I'm in a SQL Server Management Studio here, and I have a database, and basically I have three tables here, three pre-populated tables, a dishes table here, an ingredients table, and a dish ingredients table. And I'm going to use this database to create the models and the context in a new project. So I have just created a new MVC web app project, and I have already installed Microsoft Entity Framework Core, Framework Core.SQL Server and Microsoft.Entity Framework Core.Tools. So you need these three packages to be able to work with Entity Framework Core. And now what we will do is just go to Package Manager Console here and write this command scaffold dash db context. Then here we need to input the connection string of the database that we will import. So I have already copied it. After this line, we need to write here Microsoft that entity framework core that SQL server. Then we need to write dash context directory data so here we'll specify in what which directory our context will be stored which will be stored in a, a folder named data and then output directory here we specify the directory of where the models will be stored so they will be stored in the models folder and i will specify here the data annotation flag what data annotations is are basically these attributes that each property in our models take to basically validate them, to specify the relationship with each other or how they will be stored in the database. And if we specify this flag here, when the models will be created, the data annotations will be included in them. So now if you just hit enter, we'll wait for the build to succeed. And the build succeeded. If we open up our models folder here, we'll see that in our models folder, we have the dish model. These are the data annotations that were included in our models. We have the ingredient model right here. And in our data folder, we have our data context. The dish ingredient helper model was not created as a separate model in our models folder, but the relationship between dish ingredient, dish and ingredient models was specified in the DB context in the onModel creating method. If you found the video helpful, click on the screen to watch the next video in the series and learn how to build MVC web applications in ASP.NET Core. Don't forget to like the video if you got value from it, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.